Hi everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a scientist based in Austria and today I want to talk about the Dream Headband. Now the Dream Headband is a tracker that uses your brain waves or electroencephalography, in short EEG, to track your sleep. This is similar to the technology that scientists use to track your sleep in the lab. But of course now it's packed into a much smaller device, a consumer device. And the question is, how well does the Dream Headband actually work? Well, that's what I'm going to discuss in this vlog. I'm going to base my conclusions on a scientific paper that was recently released into the scientific community where they compared the Dream Headband to the professional sleep EEG devices. Now, of course, this was written for scientists, so I'm going to try to translate this into a way that makes sense to everyone. To summarize, I would say that the device appears to do pretty well, though there are a few things to keep in mind. When I was recording this video, I noticed it would be kind of a long video and I know some people like the shorter videos, so I made both a short and a long edit. If you want to see the other video as well, you can find it linked here. Now, this is the actual scientific paper that I'm talking about. So in this study, they had 25 people wear both the Dream Headband and the professional scientific sleep device to bed for one single night. And then they compare the accuracy of the two. Now, as you've seen in other videos, I normally like to test these devices myself. So I generally have access to a professional EEG device myself. Unfortunately, using a professional sleep EEG device is not an option for me in these times of Corona. But luckily they did all the work for us in this paper. Also, buying the Dream Headband is not cheap, so actually knowing about its accuracy before buying it is a good thing. So I'm happy this paper came out. And they also made all the data public, so I can actually reanalyze some of the data myself and look at it in an unbiased way. So in this paper, they want to evaluate the quality of three categories of things. So first of all, they want to look at the EEG signal quality. So how well can the Dream Headband record your brainwaves, basically. Second of all, they want to look at how accurate can heart rate, breathing frequency and breathing frequency variability be measured. And finally, they want to look at sleep stage prediction accuracy. So can it predict light sleep, REM sleep, deep sleep and awake? Now this last category, the sleep stage prediction, is I think what is most important for consumers like you and me. In the morning we want to know how much deep sleep did we get, REM sleep and light sleep. And we don't actually care about the actual signal quality of the EEG device. We just want to know how accurate can it predict my sleep stages. So that's what I'm going to mainly address in this video. I'm going to touch on the other subjects as well, but I'm going to try to mainly focus on the sleep stage prediction. I divided this video into several parts and here I show the timestamps of each of those. So first of all, I look at the study design. So how did they actually set up the study? Then I look at what the dream headband actually measures and how that compares to the professional sleep EEG device. After that, I look at the general accuracy of the device. So can it measure things like heart rate, breathing rate, stuff like that. Then I go into sleep stage prediction. So can it actually detect light sleep, deep sleep, REM sleep. Then I discuss the general pros and cons of the device. So why should you buy it? Why shouldn't you buy it? And finally, I am going to ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel, but I'll get back to that. So how did they design the study? Well, they had 25 people wear both the Dream Headband and the Professional Sleep EEG device to bed for one single night. And then they compared the two, both in sleep prediction accuracy, but also in things like heart rate, breathing rate and breathing rate variability, and also the general quality of the sleep EEG signal. Now, before we get to the results, it's important to know what the Dream Headband and the Professional Sleep EEG device actually measure during the night. So I've listed that here. Now, the Professional EEG device uses electrodes to measure your brain waves, your eye movement, your heart rate, your jaw and neck movement, and your leg movement. It also measures your breathing rate, snoring, movement of the body, and the amount of oxygen in your blood. Now the Dream device only has five electrodes, but with this I suspect they can measure both your brain waves and your eye movements, which is very important for REM sleep. Now they also have a 3D accelerometer in there with which they measure your movement, your position and your breathing frequency. So based on the movement of your head, they can get your breathing frequency. And finally, they measure your heart rate with a pulse oximeter. Now onto the results. 
As I said in this video, I want to focus on the sleep stage prediction accuracy, but I do want to mention some of the other things. So they also evaluated the quality of the EEG signal, the quality of the heart rate, breathing rate and breathing rate variability. And these all appear to be rather good, so I'm quite impressed with the quality as they describe it in the paper. So all these things they can measure pretty accurately. The only downside is that they cannot measure heart rate variability, so basically the changes in the frequency of your heart rate, just because the resolution isn't high enough for that. Now, I'll not go into details about heart rate variability, but it seems to be some important measure also for recovery of your body after exercise. Now, they also mentioned that the heart rate measurements that they do do not work very well when you're awake. Now, I don't know if they mean when you spend time out of bed awake or also when you're awake in bed, but that's also something to keep in mind. Now on to sleep stages. First, how does sleep stage prediction actually work? Well, I've made a video about that before, which you can find linked here somewhere. But I'll briefly explain how it's done and also how they did it specifically in this paper. Now for the professional sleep EEG device, basically the night is divided into segments of 30 seconds. And for each of those segments, a scientist will go through them and check was this actually light sleep, deep sleep or REM sleep based on the EEG data. Now in this particular paper they asked five different scientists to do that and they took the average of that. So basically it was democratically decided what each sleep stage was. So if three said light sleep and two said REM sleep it would be light sleep. Now for the dream headband this is a bit different. For the dream headband they created a machine learning algorithm. So this algorithm automatically for each of the 30 seconds scores what sleep stage it was. Now in some ways the machine learning algorithm behaves similarly to how a sleep scientist would behave when going through the data. So it doesn't just use the current 30 seconds of data but also the data from the 15 minutes before to decide what the current sleep stage is. Because if you were in light sleep for the last 15 minutes it's more likely you're also going to be in light sleep now. But of course there are transitions so it will take all of that into account. In sleep science they don't just look at the classic sleep stages, so deep sleep, REM sleep and light sleep, but they often subdivide these into different sub-sleep stages. So for instance in the dream headband paper they divide light sleep up into different sub-sleep stages. But for simplicity I've collapsed these down to the classic light sleep, deep sleep and REM sleep. Now let's look at some examples of how the professional sleep EEG device and the dream headband assign the different sleep stages for each of the different participants in the study. So here we see a night sleep of the first person who participated in the study. And they actually made this data public, so I could make these plots myself. And what you see on top here is the dream headband, and on the bottom the professional sleep EEG device. And on the horizontal axis here you see the time, so the person went to sleep at about 11 at night and woke up a little before 7, and the different sleep stages here on the vertical axis, so both for the dream headband and for the professional sleep EEG device. And what you can see is that they generally match pretty well. So here you see there's a period of REM sleep according to the professional EEG device. And the same for the dream headband, the same here again and again. And also the deep sleep is generally picked up on pretty well. So I'm pretty impressed. And we can also look at some other participants. So here we see somebody who had some real trouble falling asleep with the whole setup. So this person was awake a lot, which I can imagine wearing this whole professional setup and also the dream headband. But in general, the match between the two is pretty well. So we can go through all of them. Here we see one person who really couldn't sleep well with everything but the dream headband was able to pick up on this. Uh, and other people were able to sleep a lot better with uh, both of them. But in general as you can see there's always a pretty good match between the dream headband and the professional sleep EEG device. So it's able to pick up on both the periods where there is deep sleep but also periods of REM. If we combine the sleep stage information for all 25 participants, we get an overall accuracy of the dream headband of 83.9%, which is pretty good. Now, of course, we also want to know which sleep stages it actually gets confused. So does it confuse, for instance, light sleep mostly with REM sleep or with deep sleep? And we can look at that using a confusion matrix. Here I've plotted what is called a confusion matrix, which basically shows how much the professional sleep EEG device and the dream headband agree when it comes to the different sleep stages. So on the left we have the professional device, on top the dream headband, and everything that is on the diagonal, so here in green, means that it was predicted the same between the dream headband and the professional sleep EEG device. So this means, for instance, here in this area with awake, that 9.7% of my night was predicted as awake by both the professional device and the dream headband, or 47.1% of my night was predicted as light sleep by both the professional sleep EEG device and the dream headband. And anything not on the diagonal, and the biggest percentages I've marked in red here, 
are basically everything that is predicted differently between them. If we have a look at the main sleep stages that the dream headband confuses, we see that it mostly predicts too much deep sleep and REM sleep, which should have been light sleep, though it's not a major issue. To check how accurate the dream headband actually is, they compared its accuracy to the consistency of the five scientists that scored all of the nights. So they basically check how variable is the scoring of the five different scientists, and then they see that overall, between the scientists, they get an accuracy of 87.3%. So that means that the dream headband is only a few percent off from the prediction accuracy of a professional sleep EEG device. So what are the pros and cons of the dream headband? Let's look at the pros first. So it has pretty accurate sleep stage prediction and the algorithm that it uses appears to function pretty well. It can also detect your breathing, heart rate and breathing variability pretty well. And it's pretty comfortable. If you compare it to a professional sleep EEG device, which I've worn almost a hundred times, you get used to it, but it takes a lot of time to set up, like 45 minutes to an hour, whereas the dream headband takes only five minutes. And it's not that comfortable to wear. You have all these wires going to your head. So that's pretty uncomfortable. But the dream headband still records these raw physiological systems, which can also be used by scientists. And in sleep stage prediction, it appears to function much better than the Aura Ring or a Fitbit. So if that's something you really want to dig into, this appears to function pretty well. Though, of course, compared to an Aura Ring or a Fitbit, it's not as comfortable or as convenient to wear. Another downside of the dream headband is that it doesn't measure heart rate variability. The resolution of the technique it uses just isn't high enough. A downside of the dream headband is also that it's pretty expensive. It comes in at about $500 or 400 euros, which compared to other devices like a Fitbit is much more expensive. But if you're really focused on sleep, of course the dream headband appears to be much better. Now to go into some of the downsides of the study, First of all, the study was performed mostly by people who actually designed and work on the dream headband. So there is some bias there. The paper was peer reviewed, which means that other scientists did look at it that are independent. Uh, but of course, there is some bias maybe towards them publishing favorable results. Also, when I checked some of the numbers in the paper, they didn't actually add up between the text and the figures or when I did some of the recalculations, it wouldn't change any of the results or any of the conclusions, but there were some deviations there. So maybe I made a mistake, uh, but there seems to be some small inconsistency there. Also, the participants in the study were generally from a narrow age range, so between 30 and 40, most of them, and they were all relatively healthy sleepers, so they didn't have insomnia or anything. So that, of course, means we don't know how the dream headband would function for somebody with severe sleep problems. Overall, I would say, though, the study is pretty well designed. They describe it very well, and they made the data open access so we can all check it. I don't really have a reason to doubt any of the results they show in the paper, and I do trust them. So in the paper, they don't actually mention if they use the Dream 1 or Dream 2 headband, but I could see in the raw data that most nights were recorded at the end of 2018, which makes me think they probably used the newer version, so the Dream 2 headband, since this had already been out for a while. Regardless of that, the technology in the Dream 1 and Dream 2 headband is generally the same, the Dream 2 is just much more comfortable to wear. Based on this scientific study, I would say that the Dream headband performs really well, it's pretty accurate and pretty close to a professional sleep EEG device. So if you're really in the market for accurate sleep prediction, this is probably a device you could get, though it's pretty expensive at about $500. And the problem is of course what you're gonna actually do with the data to improve your sleep, but that's a general thing I think science hasn't really solved yet. But if you just wanna track your sleep, you think it's interesting, I think this is a device you could get. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any experience with the dream headband, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. If you subscribe, like or comment, the YouTube algorithm does fancy stuff and shows my video to more people. But of course, it's totally up to you. For now, I wish you a wonderful day and especially a really great night's sleep. Sleep well.